afternoon, I'd like to welcome everyone to our first Brockton Democratic City Committee debate for our Plymouth County Commissioners. Um, and our moderator today is Kevin Tachi. Thank you, Deb. And as Deb said, uh, we are uh, here uh, outside of the new and improved uh, Brockton Community Access located on 1 North Main Street. This event being sponsored by the Brockton Democratic City Committee and Brockton Community Access. This is featuring the Democrats who are on the, de on the candidate, these are the Democrats who are the candidates on the September 1st primary ballot. The candidates are Michael Bradley, Carlos De Silva, Greg Hanley, who is a, uh, a candidate for re-election, and Jack Reardon, or John Reardon. Um, I'm Kevin Tachi, and I will saw, serve as the moderator. Our forum is fairly s simple. Opening statements will be three minutes. There'll be a candidate question and answer period. If there's time, candidates will have a chance to pose a question to the other candidates and then closing statements. Now the candidates will have three minutes for each for the opening and closing statement. So it's three minutes for your opening statement and then another three minutes for the close. Uh, to respond to a question, you will have two minutes. Now, if for some reason you run out of time, uh, that's what your closing statement is for. I'm sure you've heard that somewhere before, um, but you can use that three minutes at the end for something that maybe you didn't get to give a full enough answer to one of the questions. Uh, on our time today is none other than Patrick Quinn. Uh, he will, of course, give you a hand signal when we're getting to the end of your time. Uh, we'll give you a, a couple of seconds to wrap up, but if it seems like you keep, you keep going, I'll say okay, and then we'll ask you to stop because your time has ended. Uh, the way we are starting is going to be according to the ballot, uh, and we'll reverse that. So we're going to start with Greg Hanley. Mr. Hanley, you have three minutes for your opening statement. Thank you, Kevin, and I want to thank uh, Brockton Community Access for hosting this forum, as well as the Brockton Democratic City Committee. It's a pleasure for me to be here. A little over eight years ago, uh, I became your Plymouth County Commissioner. And on day one, I inherited a $64 million deficit on the uh, county operational uh, budget and a structural deficit of $750,000. I came in full of ideas on um, what I campaigned on, wanted to do regional trash, and I wanted to do solar, uh, but wasn't able to do so on day one. Uh, the work that I had to do was more or less fix the finances of the county. Uh, for 13 straight years, there were no audits performed, and when you're going out to try to source money or try to borrow it, you need a bond rating, and no bonding company would touch us. So with that, my work was pretty uh, cut out for me. It wasn't what I signed up for, but I definitely embraced it. Uh, along the way, we've had some victories. We stabilized the finances through a number of debt reduction programs, uh, number one being the maintenance of effort there was $33 million left over after the jail was taken over by the state and left behind with the legacy costs, which were the retirement costs of uh, the employees that formerly worked there. Each city and town in the county had to pay for that, although we had no resources to uh, pay for it on our own. We lobbied the legislature successfully, and now 10 cents out of every dollar transacted down at the Registry of Deeds comes out of the General Fund of the Commonwealth to pay that debt down to where it will be at zero come 2024. I'm very proud of that achievement. It speaks to the collegiality of the commissioners. I sit with two Republicans. And if you can imagine, as the lone Democrat, we really didn't see eye to eye ideologically uh, on many issues prior to becoming a county commissioner. But because the way the county was left to us, we had to roll up our sleeves and work together. And that's exactly what we did. Along the way, we created another um, employee owned in trust called the OPEB Trust. It's the other post-employment trust for Plymouth County. That is where the retirees' health care costs, which were skyrocketing, and needed to come under control. So we got an IRS-approved uh, fund that 27 communities now participate in. And the idea is to bring all of their debt to the table and their investment strategy to a group so bulk purchasing of stocks has a return of investment to those communities, something we're very proud of. And the most recent uh, thing, which is probably the best thing that I've done as a county commissioner, was the adoption of the CARES Act. 
and I'll get into that a little bit more as we get on in the debate. Okay, so next up will be Michael Bradley. You have three minutes, Mr. Bradley. Well, thank you to our host, Kevin, uh, to my colleagues here today. Uh, my name is Michael Bradley. I'm running for Plymouth County Commissioner. Currently in my second term as a Marshfield Selectman. I'm also chair of the Plymouth County Advisory Board, which is the legislative body that oversees county government. Prior to my time in local government, I was an officer and a lieutenant with the Plymouth County Sheriff's Department, a prosecutor with the Norfolk County District Attorney's Office, executive director of a statewide crime task force initiated by the governor's office, and I own a small law practice on the South Shore. I'm very proud of the work we've accomplished over the last six years, working on important community issues, such as the battle against opiate addiction, working on our critical infrastructure and public safety, working on human issues, health care, veteran services. I'm very proud of a, a public-private partnership I created with a company called uh, Neighbor Works to come into town to take an old historic building that was essentially useless to restore that building to its historic value, but also to make it a home for homeless veterans. Veteran homelessness is an unfortunate reality in this country, and we're doing our part to make a dent in that. Uh, as you might imagine, we also spent a lot of time on the budget recently. We had to rapidly adapt to the, to the loss of revenue because of the COVID-19 emergency. In Marshfield, we have a $103 million budget where we cut out $1.9 million, and I'm very proud to say we did that without resorting to layoffs. I plan to bring a measured, experienced approach to county government, one that highlights what the county does for all of us, which is essentially regional services. Regional services make more sense now than ever. Uh, municipalities, towns, and cities are hurting. There are programs and services available at the county level at little or no cost because you're already paying. These programs range from our wonderful 4-H program, our municipal bulk purchase program, where you can purchase fuel oil, equipment, vehicles at massively discounted rates. And we have everything from parking ticket collection, we have a staff grant writer, we have a staff entomologist who come to your, your school, talk about tick-borne illness, how to prevent it. Um, in addition to that, we have a dredging program that can and should be expanded. Um, most recently, the county is now in the COVID-19 uh, reimbursement fund process. Uh, this is something that I can tell you, as a Marshfield selectman, uh, we got $1.2 million in a two-week period uh, directly back to the town. That helped us avoid uh, a second wave of cuts that would have likely resulted in layoffs. I can tell you that um, in my efforts to join with the commissioners, uh, there's uh, $12 million in a need-based program marked for Brockton. And I know they have an application in for $1 million right now. I'm getting the high sign, so the county does a lot. It can do a lot more. I want to expand services so we can do more for our member communities. Hey, the candidate was Mike Bradley. Up next is Carlos De Silva. Carlos, you have three minutes. Good afternoon. Bonjour. Boa tarde. Buenos dias. My name is Carlos da Silva. I was born in the small city in the countryside of Brazil, one of nine children of a public servant's parents. My mother was a teacher and my father was a policeman. At 18, I came to the West alone and without knowing the language. Before long, I was lucky enough to meet my wife, Rita, who was born and raised in Quincy. We married and adopted two beautiful babies from Brazil. We named them Andre, who was name, named after my father-in-law, who is 92 years old, two Purple Heart Korean veteran. And my other son, we named him Edson, after my brother, who was 21 years old, police officer, killed on the line of duty, and he was only on the police force for six months. <clears throat> Family is everything to me. One of my passions is to be involved with the community, and I would be truly honored to serve the citizens of Brockton and Plymouth County as your next commissioner. I am a state auditor with the Executive Office of Labor and Workforce Development. I also have experience in contract negotiations, business development, facilities uh, operation, and budgeting. As mentioned, equally important to me is my community involvement. I'm vice chair of the Hingham School Committee. I was elected in 2016 and re-elected in 2019, becoming the first Brazilian American elected to office in the United States of America. Recently, I was elected 
as a member of the Massachusetts Democratic State Committee. I am a former chairman of the Hingham Democratic uh, State uh, Town Committee and former chairman of the Quincy Wachu uh, City Committee. Additionally, I am a member of the, uh, uh, I am a trustee of the Sons and Daughters of Italy and a member of the Brockton Area NAACP. Um, I uh, have served the Quincy Zoning Board of Appeals and with my broad experience, I have unique insight into how the county can foster more profitable and new partnerships. I'm here to respectfully ask for your support. So the candidate is, uh, that was Carlos da Silva. Next up is Mr. John Jack Ridden. Mr. Ridden, you have three minutes for your opening statement. Thank you very much, Kevin. My name is John Ridden. All my friends in Brockton know me by the name of Jack. I'd like to share with you a little bit about my background and why I'm running for Plymouth County Commissioner. I grew up in Brockton on the left side of Brockton. I graduated from Brockton High School. I have many, many fond mem memories of this city, whether it be spending my summers at the East Side Pool, the Montello Pool, the Camp Campello Pool, and I have many, many cherished memories of the times I've spent here and the times I still spend here today as I work here every day. After graduating from high school, I went on to college, graduated from the University of Massachusetts at Amherst. Then I received and earned a law degree from New England Law of Boston and Juris Doctor degree. After that, I, after, co after college and law school, I came back to Brockton and I served as an assistant district attorney here in the city of Brockton and the other courts of this county. One of the things that became totally amazing to me is how much the city had changed. And we had a major city, Brockton, I love dearly, that, which did not have a boys and girls club. Many people participated, myself and others, to create that club. I served for many years as the president of the Brockton Boys and Girls Club. And while I was president of the Brockton Boys and Girls Club, I was able to acquire the present building where the club stands on Warren Avenue. Later, in the 90s and 2000s, I was able to establish the Mochila Project in Brockton, which means backpack in Spanish. And what that's all about is it really bothered me as I would drive around the city sometimes in cold mornings and see these children at bus stops with no coats and backpacks. We started that, that project and became very successful. In 2017, in December, I was um, surprised that I received the Massachusetts Bar Association Community Service Award for giving back to the community. I'd like to share with you a little bit about why I am running for Plymouth County Commissioner. I have three proposals that I would like to see. Number one, the county commissioners do not video or audio record their meetings. Every other entity in the county, whether it be the city council, selectmen boards, planning boards, they all record their meetings. It's not done. Number two, when I was a county commissioner from 2000 to 2012, I led the bipartisan effort to establish a code of ethics. And that code of ethics was very simple. People that are serving as elected officials, county commissioners, should not accept political contributions from people who do business with the county. I would move to reestablish that code of ethics. I see that my time's up. Thank you very much, Mr. Quinn. John Sidden with his, uh, cl his opening statement. We'll move right into the portion where we start asking questions. You have two minutes to answer these questions, gentlemen. Uh, so the first question, I feel that we can't do a political forum with this group of candidates without giving a little bit of an explanation or getting an understanding or your understanding as to what it is that the office that you're running for. So I'm sure there are folks who are at home watching saying, what is a county commissioner? So my first question is please explain exactly what a county commissioner is and what are the responsibilities of that individual? Uh, Jack, we'll go back to you. Thank you very much. You have two minutes to answer that question. The responsibilities of county commissioner are defined by the Massachusetts general laws. But generally, the county, what it is today, was not what it was 50 years ago. In, originally, it was intended as a regional services that provided everything from running the court systems to running the district attorney's office to providing and paving roads that transverse the county. We all, once time, one, at one time, we ran the county hospital, which was tuberculosis. A lot of those functions have gone away and have been transferred to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. But today, the purpose of the county commissioners is we are the, or they are, the executive branch of county government. 
They serve as the executive branch. And the forward thrust is basically to provide regional services. As mentioned earlier, one of the great, great regional services is the 4-H service. Thousands of, uh, thousands of hundreds of children across the county participate in 4-H. That's a great example. Another example is joint purchasing and purchasing of goods and services and allowing the cities and towns to provide that, to purchase those at a discount rate. So as I answer your question, it's primarily a regional services entity. Thank you. Okay. Up next, Mr. Hanley, same question. <laughs> Tell me exactly what a county commissioner is and what their responsibilities are. I think Jack gave the classic definition of, of what the county was. I think since I've been county commissioner, it has evolved out of necessity. Uh, in addition to overseeing uh, all of those functions, we also oversee the court, courts uh, for the trial court. Uh, right here in Brockton Superior Court, we oversee uh, the facility and the campus there as well. Uh, we, over the past uh, eight years have made substantial improvements in investment into that historical building to keep it as a functioning building. We also oversee the Registry of Deeds, which as well has on Elm Street, West Elm, um, the Registry of Deeds satellite operation, which formerly uh, housed uh, the district attorney. After he vacated the premises, we have now uh, made that a satellite uh, office for the Registry of deeds for the convenience of the residents of Brockton. Uh, there is a lot more, uh, and I'm not getting the high sign yet, but uh, as far as uh, what we've evolved into, we are fiduciary people now. We manage uh, the health care system through the Mayflower Group. We have the Plymouth County OPEB Trust that we administer that. We have the parking uh, program. Uh, Jack spoke to 4-H. 4-H this particular year has been a, a great program for us to administer. We um, put together 18 acres down on the county farm for their exclusive use. We secured $100,000 from our legislative delegation for a greenhouse. And finally, we have just put together an agreement uh, on our building with Holtec, uh, the people that oversee the Plymouth um, nuclear power plant, to take over 4,000 square foot of space that are going to be set aside for uh, classrooms and offices for 4-H. Right. Thank you, Mr. Hanley. Up next, same question, uh, Mr. Carlos De Silva. Please tell me what. I, tell me about the office of uh, being a county commissioner and what actually your role is. I would like to uh, people to truly try very hard to remember, uh, because many of my friends ask me two, three times, and they still don't know what the county commissioners do. So I'll say that look at your board of selectmen and envision the county commissioners being the selectmen of the county, right? Uh, overseeing a budget of $10 million with approximately 83 employees working uh, throughout uh, the buildings and uh, the hedges of deeds. Uh, they uh, essentially negotiate contract with three unions representing the, those workers. Uh, um, my colleagues mentioned, or oh, my uh, fellow, fellow candidates mentioned, you know, they oversee the 4-H program, the parking process and fee for some of the municipalities that chose to be part of it. Uh, a program that would like to look at it. They, um, but m most people are very familiar with the 4-H program because of the schools. Um, they do offer the uh, retirement plan uh, finance uh, operations. Uh, they all oversee the May Mayflower health insurance. Um, and uh, they do have the, uh, the fire plan to combat fire. Uh, you know, they work with the, the mosquito control I believe now they stop and right because another entity is picking that up. Uh, but you know, for you know, a lot of the times people take for granted you know the, the mosquito spray. Uh, so that is a, a service that's free of charge. Uh, collecting uh, fees for uh, real estate transactions, which is part of the revenue, something that we like to look into it to see if we can increase it. Uh, because obviously with those revenues we can provide additional service to the county. And most importantly, how can we? Uh, we regionalize, regionalize a program that's working in Brockton to work in another uh, city. Thank you, or town. Okay, that was uh, Carlos Silva. Up next is Mike Bradley. Same question, what exactly is a county commissioner and what are the responsibilities? So the role of the county commission is, is, is one, to take care of the executive, financial, and personnel management of the county. And secondarily is to, to uh, highlight the regional services that we provide. 
And to do that, you must interact with our elected officials on every level, not only in every other town, but our regional elected officials, to not only highlight, but to promote programs that we think can work for your community. The county has a lot of programs. My colleagues have just mentioned some of them. Um, but I think one of the roles is not only to, to effectively communicate with each community, to find out what they need, and then show them what we have on the county and that what we can do for them. So the county is essentially regional services. We want to highlight those services, enhance communication where possible, and also try to find out what we can do for specific communities. Again, you are watching a, a political forum featuring the candidates for Plymouth County Commissioner. Uh, our next question is in regards to uh, the county applying for and receiving stimulus funds, that's the CARES Act funding, from the federal government. Now, during the initial phase of uh, the pandemic, there were some local leaders and citizens who believed that the actions did not favor the region. Give me your thoughts on the county applying for this, this funding uh, through the federal government. Uh, Mr. Bradley, where we left off with you, you have two minutes to answer, please. So this was a, an extensive program offered by the federal government to bring in uh, $90 million to the to Plymouth County. Uh, not an easy decision for the commissioners to make, but one with, which was in their sole purview. However, they made that decision in conjunction with the advisory board of which I'm chair. So I think it was important to have the advisory board in. I'm going to do my best to speak over the trucks, uh, which we did. And that advisory board has a member from every community in, in the region. And every member of the advisory board was given an opportunity to say their piece, whether they liked it, disliked it, what they felt uh, they should do. Some of the impact, uh, some of the aspects I heard were accountability, um, uh, timing, and audit system, all of which from that advisory board meeting and my meetings with the commissioners, they did take into account their approach. So I think it was a difficult decision. I can tell you that in practice, it's the right decision. Marshfield received $1.25 million in record time. That money went to schools, that money went to first responders, that money went to PPE equipment. Without that money, uh, we would have had to make more difficult decisions that would very likely have resulted in layoffs. So while a difficult decision, I applaud the commissioners for taking it on. I'm happy to have been part of the process that implemented that. So I think it's, a, it's in practice better than it was in theory. Okay. That was uh, Mike Bradley. Thank you for your answer. Up next, Jack Redden. Two minutes, give me, say, give me your same thoughts in regards to uh, the CARES Act funding that the county secured and received uh, and the local leaders and how they, were, they didn't feel that it favored the region. Give me your thoughts. I share the uh, sentiment of the two largest communities that penned in letters to the county commissioners and the advisory board that they were totally against this. You know, I look at the, um, I look at the track record of the county and their ability to administer things and not what they say. And if you take a look at the 2019 Inspector General's report regarding them attempting to administer a county dredge program, the Inspector General said it was a total financial disaster. They said there was a dredge, there was no dredge, there was an excavator. They said they didn't have a barge, they didn't have a captain, uh, a captain for it. And by law, they're supposed to use the county funds from your ta these tax bases, taxpayers and the people from Brockton they are supposed to use that for benefit the people of Plymouth County, and it was used in Chatham and it was used in Falmouth. So I look at what, not, not what is said, but what is being done and has been done. So I share the other major, the two major community sentiment that they were against it. Now let me talk a little bit more specifically. The Commonwealth of Massachusetts offered to do that for zero. When they, when the county went out and they did this CARES Act, they had no idea what the outside cost was going to be for the consultants and attorneys that they hired. The Commonwealth of Massachusetts offered to do it free for nothing. In the end, we don't. The, the devil is in the details, and I'm sure you that money that's being spent for these outside attorneys and, count, and accountants should have gone to the cities and towns, and it's not because of the cost. The Commonwealth would have done it for nothing. So I am not for the county administering the CARES Act. Okay. Thank you. That was John Ridden. Uh, up next uh, is. Greg Hanley, same, qu same question, Greg, and that is in regards to the COVID-19 funding. How did, how did regional, did, did this benefit, um, did you have local leaders and citizens who did not believe that the actions would favor the region? 
We did, uh, and actions speak louder than words, and mm -hmm. well done is better than well said. Um, when we took this on, I knew that um, the county could take it on because we have an educated workforce. We have leadership, we have integrity. We have people that are experienced in grant uh, administration through the ARA funds that were available to uh, the area in 2010. Yes, the two large folks came up at the request of the Secretary of ANF who insisted we were not capable. But I am happy to report today, after the first and second round of funding, we've administered $22 million to the member communities. And if you talk to anyone who was against us uh, on the administrative level, you'll, happy, you'll be happy to see them turn that around. In fact, Mayor Sullivan came out and opposed it. Today, Mayor Sullivan endorsed me because of the efforts of the CARES Act. The Brockton City Council endorsed $12 million in spending because this community needs it most. When I had the opportunity to speak with the governor, the governor, one question I asked him, can you guarantee me that 100% of the money is going to come back? And he couldn't. So that's when I knew that we had to step on. And I challenge all of my colleagues, I challenge the public to go and talk to the people who have worked with the county to administer that money. There's an average of a two-week turnaround on bills that are submitted. There are bills that are, the town of Marshfield from the hurricane from MEMA and FEMA haven't even received yet. So I challenge anyone to uh, challenge the success of our program. So I stand behind it. Thank you, Mr. Hanley, Greg Hanley. Um, up next is Carlos De Silva. Same question, uh, the CARES Act funded $90 million that was secured by the county. Um, your thoughts as to local leaders and citizens who believe that these actions would not favor the region. I am one of the leaders actually that called on the commissioners uh, to return the money to the state uh, based on the inspector general findings of them misusing taxpayers money and that was less than three hundred thousand dollars right and uh, it, the fact that they didn't have experience and the individuals calling for them to turn the money to the state were individuals with credibility and integrity um, I was also calling on the commissioners and the treasurer, because they're running for office, not to use that moment for uh, photo op. They're doing exactly that. And there is some misrepresentation on the part of Mr. Bradley, where he's saying that he brought to Marshfield $1.3 million, and that is saving uh, you know, individuals from getting laid off. The truth of the matter is that COVID-19 money is strictly 110% only for COVID-19 expenditure only. That will not go to teachers, that will not go to prevent layoff anyway. As a matter of fact, Mr. Bradley is not part of contract negotiations with the schools at all. The schools are autonomous. They negotiate their own contract, and as a matter of fact, they have not even completed the memorandum of agreement in terms of reopening the schools. So, Mr. Bradley, you are misrepresenting yourself when you're saying that you save the, the Marshfield from laying off. Number one. Number two. You should be looking at the town, the city of Brockton, right? You was the chairman of the advisory. You had inside information and you went and brought the first money that you had an opportunity to, to Marshfield. And now you're going around taking pictures of, you know, with $50,000 here and there. It's, you are utilizing your position unethically. Mr. Tachi, can you give me 30 seconds to respond? You have 30 seconds to respond, Mr. DeSelva. So, 30 seconds. Um, in preparing the budget, we spend money. In order to spend money, we have to take it from different sources. So when we spend $1.2 million on COVID expenses, mm -hmm. it's got to come from somewhere. So when that money needs to be available to fund contracts, teachers, officers, firefighters, it's got to come from somewhere. So when that money gets reimbursed, Carlos, if you knew anything about the budget, it goes back into the budget mm -hmm. such that we have it for use for teachers, for firefighters, for police officers. And yes, I coordinate with the chair of the school committee, the superintendent, on all contract negotiations in the town. And if you had come to one selectman's meeting, you probably know that. But I haven't seen you there, and I've never seen you at a county commissioner's meeting. May I? A quick 15 seconds. I have actually sat on uh, five budgets, sir. And you know what? I'm on the school committee. We are, are autonomous. You have nothing to do with contract negotiations. That money went $700,000 to purchase new computer for the schools. So that has nothing to do with layoff of teachers. And we can, I'll, I'll challenge you to go back and look into that. And gentlemen, what I would say is, is if you have anything further to say on this, again, use your closing statements to address this if needed, sure, okay? Sure, sure. 
Uh, next question. Uh, the county currently is carrying a sizable debt, um, somewhere in around $15 million, if I'm correct. What means should the county use to try to eliminate this debt that has been, been shrinking over the years? We'll start with Mr. Carlos De Silva. You have two minutes. I uh, you know, would like to actually ask Mr. Greg Henley uh, what they have done to shrink that to 17. I think I, we, you know? let's, let's do this. Let's, you answer the question as to what you'll do to eliminate the 15 million. I, I truly would work with, uh, you know, I've, I have a program, right? One of the programs that I'm pu I put in place and I have uh, not had an opportunity to mention is I would start a, uh, an internship program uh, work in partnership with the businesses where we would bring the youth uh, to, as an interns to learn how to write grants. There is plenty of free money out there. So grant writings, grant money is the way to go. Uh, obviously, when you apply for grants, the money has to be set aside for, to do the service that you're saying that you're going to do it. You probably would not be able to use uh, to uh, eliminate the death, deficit. Uh, but you know, according, based on the information that I have, they work with the legislature to forgive portion of the deficit. deficit. So I think that's the way to go. It's, it's working with the state government, uh, bringing people to the table that can actually forge a relationship with them because uh, the truth of the matter is that you know you hear the possibility of the governor even interfering and in, in trying to close the, the county, uh, the commissioners. So what we have to do is work with the state government and the federal government so they understand that most of that, uh, that deficit is related to transferring employees to the state level. If you did that, if they took the assets, they should be taking the liability, liability as well. That's what I would do. I would work with the uh, state and federal officials to come up with a, a uh, you know, way of uh, forgiveness uh, of that debt. Okay, that was uh, Carlos De Silva. Up next, same question, Mr. Bradley. Uh, what would you do, what, what means should the county use to eliminate uh, its outstanding debt at this time? The county's been doing it since, uh, you know, since Commissioner Hanley came on. I can tell you that part of every budget and part of every program, the money goes into to regional services, but also there's a, a great aspect that goes into stabilization fund, and there's a large aspect that goes towards debt reduction. That is occurring, it will continue to occur, and that is already occurring. And that's why Commissioner Hanley can tell you that when he got there, the debt was somewhere in the range of $64 million, and now every year he's been chipping away at it, and now it's down to $17 million. There's a good plan in place, and we're gonna continue with that plan. That was Mike Bradley. Um, up next is Jack Reardon. Same question. What means should the county use to eliminate its outstanding debt at this time? Well, the county commissioners have 27 communities in Plymouth County. And obviously, the debt, there needs to be a collaboration with the cities and towns, and they should have some input and a vote into how to address those issues. I do not think that the county commissioners should arbitrarily think they're the sole decider in these issues. I believe that there needs to be an analysis of the costs, there needs to be an analysis of the expenditures, but certainly we're going to look at things like, and then we should look at things, such as the Inspector General's report and how the money was wasted on the dredge, little things like that. So to answer your question directly, we need to have a careful review by outside accountants of the expenditures and see if they're legitimately being expended in accordance with the law. We can start there. And there has to be a collaboration with the cities and towns because the county is funded by assessment attacks on the cities and towns and with the registry of deeds. Those are the major two sources. And whatever the county commissioners want to do, it affects the city of Rockton and it affects the towns and it should be a collaboration, a joint decision. Okay. That is uh, John Bearden. Uh, same question, Mr. Handley. Uh, what, what should be done in regards to what should the county do to continue eliminating its debt? Well, I think the number one thing we have to do is in, improve our uh, resources that the state has from the general fund. Each um, transaction at the Registry of Deeds yields 10 cents on the dollar back to the county. In the 1980s, that used to be 42 cents. We put together a coalition of uh, statewide um, county commissioners and we lobbied a legislative delegation that actually got the distribution into the um, a joint conference committee of ways and means and we're on the uh, third uh, vote and it got shot down. What it was was an effort to take that fee and split it in the middle. So and rather than get 10 cents on the dollar 
and rather than get 42 cents on the dollar, which was our ask, the compromise was about 28 cents on the dollar. It didn't survive, but is an antiquated form of um, financing. So what we've been able to do is ge uh, create generating uh, revenue generating programs like the vehicle bid. We receive money on that. The uh, OPEB trust, we receive a reduction at a much higher rate of return because we've chosen to pre-fund retirement and pre-fund OPEB with uh, monies that are left over. There was never a stabilization account in the county. We created it through legislation. That money, on the good years, we were able to put away into a stabilization and then reassert it into pre-funding uh, through 2024, a schedule that is, is lean and mean, but will solve the debt by the time I, as your county commissioner, if you reelect me, um, and, and, and I do pledge that once that debt is down to zero, I am no longer going to be running as a county commissioner. I'll make that pledge to all of you today. Okay, that is Greg Hanley uh, answering that question. Our next question, the state government has a process of separating its own oversight with the elected position of the Office of the State Auditors, the State Auditor. Brockton, for a continued amount of time, has suffered from what many people say is there is no money. With Brockton's almost $500 million budget, there clearly is money. Is there a role for the Plymouth County Commissioners to play in auditing the spending budgets of communities? You have two minutes, Mr. Hanley. With respect to auditing, I think the more important issue would be where can we collaborate with our federal legislation? I know Congressman Lynch uh, is here almost uh, weekly when he's in town, uh, always looking at ways and means to um, subsidize uh, any kind of loss of revenue. I think the biggest uh, drag has been uh, the, the failure of the uh, Chapter 70 money in education, uh, and that deficit really drags down uh, the city. But I think you've got the right finance team in place here, and if we can lend the resources of the county treasurer with the CFO, who happens to be Troy Claxon, who used to be the county administrator, and now that we have uh, Bob Sullivan in looking for help from anybody uh, to solve the problems, I think I buy into his concept of many hands make for light work, and if he can establish a committee, there's absolutely a role that the county can play, primarily on the federal level, uh, but we're willing to leverage our contacts in uh, the legislature. We have friendships in professional experiences. Multiple um, professional people in the county have been previously elected, and we have relationships with state senators and reps and, by the way, the auditor of the Commonwealth. So we will offer our services in any way. We'll be open-minded to whatever we can do to help Brockton uh, get through whatever crisis it needs. Okay, that was uh, Greg Hanley. Up next is Carlos De Silva. Carlos. Is there a role for the Plymouth County Commissioners to play in auditing in the spending budgets of communities? No other than, no other than working with the state auditor, who is a duly elected official, uh, but I would actually call on the auditor to uh, conduct uh, you know, consistent audits, not only of the county commissioner's office, uh, but also at uh, the 27 municipalities, and work uh, closely uh, with the whole office uh, to ensure that that is done and uh, not only that, after the fact, whatever finds that there is, help the communities, uh, you know, whether it's in the positive or the negative, work with them so they can uh, actually uh, maintain in compliance. Uh, but uh, I, uh, I wouldn't believe that the county commissioners would have any roles in uh, conducting any other things. Okay, that was Carlos De Silva up next is Mike Bradley. Same question, Mike. So the, the county does not have a role in the auditing of individual towns and, and cities. They have their own elected officials, their own staff, their own city councils to do those audits. And those get done on a regular basis. In Marshfield, we audit every year, and that's, that's something that is uh, consistent throughout the community. I think our role is not only to, to follow what these communities are due, but supplement them when their audit reveals a shortfall in a specific area we can find that area and maybe we can bridge the gap between these communities in terms of their financial shortfalls. But our role is not to audit them, it's to support them. Okay. That was Mike Bradley. Um, same question, Mr. Reardon. Thank you very much. 
Once again, when anyone proposes anything to the county, the first step that I look at is the Massachusetts general laws that clearly define the limitations and what the county can and cannot do. So there is nothing in the Massachusetts general laws that would allow the county to audit the cities and towns. The cities and towns, the city of Brockton runs a, runs a, a city council and, and, and the city of Brockton elected officials run a great operations. They're perfectly competent to do that themselves. So if, if that were to be, that would have to be a change of the Massachusetts general laws and I would be against that. The cities and towns are perfectly competent to perform their own audits and by the way, the county would never be able to do that. The county does not employ any CPAs. They don't have the technical staff on board. So it's, 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 it would, it's just something that couldn't happen. Okay. Uh, so my next question would be is name one thing that you would like to improve on the county level if elected or re-elected to the commission. Mr. Ridd, you have two minutes. Thank you very much. I had highlighted a little bit earlier about the 4-H program and I don't think that a lot of people really understand how many hundreds and hundreds of children across the county participate in 4-H. It might be beekeeping, it might be learning to agricultural to have a garden, it might be people that want to learn how to can goods. It, could be involvement with their dogs and their cats, different groups that they would belong to. Just like I was president of the Brockton Boys and Girls Club, I really, really believe that the county should expand that program. Now right now, if there is a collaboration with UMass Amherst uh, for the county 4-H program, but I believe that should be expanded. Anytime we keep children busy, more active, the more productive they come in life. So the 4-H is the main paramount thrust that the county should go right now. Thank you. So are you volunteering to be a part of the, the beekeepers? Um? Sure, absolutely. Okay. Uh, same question, Mr. Hanley. Uh, what, what, what would be the one thing that you'd like to improve on the county level if you're reelected to the commission? Again, I go back to the uh, funding. Uh, if we can get money, um, we can do a lot more. Um, the things that we've been able to do are, are an expansion of the 4-H program, as I stated earlier. Um, with, with you talk about most most counties that are remaining have agricultural schools and we have a thriving population of 4-H kids. Um, the, if re-elected, I have a pet project that I'm uh, putting forward. Uh, right now the federal government has made available uh, to interested parties the old armory right here in Brockton. And I would like to address the homeless veteran uh, issue because with the conveyance of that land comes the um, priority of veteran homelessness. But I've been on the phone talking to the Charity Guild, I've been on the phone talking to the congressman, and if we are able to successfully take over that building, uh, we would look to uh, address homelessness. And that, that's one of the reasons that I, I hope you return me to it because I, I have some tread on this right now and it's, it's moving along. And I will bring it, if I'm not successful, as far as I can and I would hope my successors would be able to champion that cause because it's it's universal it plagues us all and it's not limited to veterans so maybe it's something that we can grow and bring multi uh, agencies in to help uh, address that issue uh, regionally as well as uh, the city of Brockton that is Mr. Greg Hanley uh, same question Carlos De Silva one thing that you would like to improve on the county level if you are elected services to the 27 municipalities across the board in an equal manner. Uh, and uh, how you do that when you actually not, don't have the revenues is actually coming up with a program that can be a win-win for everyone. You have to bring in the youth. You have to engage the youth uh, by, by starting this uh, a partnership with the local businesses and the chambers of commerce and local universities. We can start this internship program teach the students how to write a grants. With that grant money, we could provide services to the veterans, not only the veterans, uh, uh, not veterans, only homeless veterans, but also all, all homelesses uh, across the, the county. Here in Brockton, we have a lot of homeless uh, you know, individuals. Uh, that money could help them. We could uh, help the senior centers that most of the time are underfunded. We could help the firefighters with trainings because a lot of the times that they are underfunded. Uh, you know, in other public service, uh, you know, we need to bring more technology to our schools. The state uh, is not funding enough, perhaps helping 
write grants and bring money to the county level, we can distribute money across the municipalities. Hingham uh, applied for $1.5 million for dredging and we got the money alone. County commissioners could apply for that money and we could not only do the dredging on the coast but also the ponds and making sure that uh, we can utilize the space for recreation. So there is a lot of that can be done. Obviously there is not enough money right now but providing more services to the 27 municipalities with transparency, videotaping the meetings, announcing when the meetings are taking place, that is doable and we should do that. Okay, Mr. Carlos De Silva, um, finally on this question, same, same question, Mr. Bradley. What would you, what would be the one thing that you'd like to improve on the county level if you're elected? Thank you. Uh, there's a conversation that occurred over the last several years that seems to have died down on the creation of a joint police and fire training facility. I think that that conversation needs to be restarted. The county has an obligation to our first responders and we have a unique opportunity. If we can pool resources from all of our 27 communities, we can put such a f facility in Plymouth County and if we did, the first day it opened, it would be immediately used by police and fire and all our first responders. Right now, they travel out west and to even to other states to train because we don't have the proper training facilities. So I think this is one aspect that can be improved on. And just as a segue to, to Greg Hanley's comments about veteran services, we're doing it in Marshfield. We can do it on the county level, and we can do it at a greater uh, we can do it at a greater rate. Okay, this is the portion where we're going to move to allowing you each to ask a question of another candidate and we'll go we'll continue in the order so up first to ask a question of another candidate make sure you say who you're saying the, the question to Mike Bradley who would you like to ask a question of and what would that question be thank you uh, my question is to Jack Reardon Jack uh, I think everybody's voting record is fair game when you were a county commissioner uh, there's several reports of you uh, attempting to dissolve county government specifically I know the sheriff's department left the county in January 1 2010 and in March of 2010 uh, there's articles quoting you that state that you felt that the county had become a third layer redundant level of government and should be dissolved. Now I don't understand how as a, a candidate for county commissioner who tried to dissolve county government how you can reconcile that. I'd ask you to explain that. Thank you very kindly. I say it then and I say it now. We had two courses of action at that time. The county was rife and riddled with, with people that just had incredible unethical conduct. We had all these problems with different county branches of government. We were either going to correct those problems or we were going to look at another avenue. We were able to turn things around by creating a new registry of deeds in Plymouth, go out to bond that, state-of-the-art facility. We were, at that time, we had to make a decision and my position then is the same position now. We were either going to fix those things or we were going to look at other avenues. Now in regards to the uh, Sheriff's Department, that's the classic issue. The county had no, no, it was an archaic function for the county to perform. We have the Commonwealth of Massachusetts that's very skilled in correctional facilities. I was helped leading that way with Senator Murray at the time, who was a state senator and many other people, to transfer that function to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts where they had the expertise to run it. If we were unable to accomplish that, and if we were unable to adopt the code of ethics, which is don't accept political contributions when people do business with county, and if we were unable to create a new registry of deeds, then, hey, at that point, if the county, if we're not able to fix it and it's so broken, then you gotta look at uh, other avenues. All right. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Reardon, you're up to ask a question. Interesting enough. Uh, you have two minutes. Who would you like to ask the question of and, sure. and pose the sure. question? Sure. Carlos De Silva, tell me you mentioned a little bit earlier that you're, some of the reasons you're running for county commissioner. Tell me some of the uh, ethical issues you would like to see addressed. I have issues with elected officials or anybody serving in public uh, position, uh, not telling the truth. Uh, individuals, uh, for example, uh, WATD radio on our debate this past week brought uh, to the table that Mr. Greg Hanley, uh, or a question was asked whether Mr. Greg Hanley lives in Plymouth County, and he stated for the record that he does live 
in Plymouth. Uh, and uh, I just want to say that, you know, you have to live in the city of Boston in order to work for the city of Boston. Yes, there is not a requirement for you to live in the Plymouth County in order for you to run for Plymouth County Commissioner. But uh, I would like to uh, say that, you know, I am running for office because I say what I mean, I mean what I say. You will never catch me telling a lie. Uh, you, you heard what, uh, you know, Mr. Bradley said before about, you know, uh, he brought in $1.3 million to avoid layoffs, something that's not true. I attest to that uh, because the memorandum of agreement with the teachers reopening the schools is not yet done. Uh, you know, so bringing ethics uh, and uh, in most definitely character, you have to have character. You're going to be a public servant. My father taught me that if I, my fee is one dollar and I charge five dollars, then I am not being honest with myself. Next is Greg Hanley. Greg Hanley, um, you get to ask a question. What is the question? Who is the individual and what's the question? You can pass to well, it. You know, it's funny. I, I, I would rather speak to, you know, what I can do and not what the other guy can. I don't like to be a critic and, and see how uh, people can stumble um, because of criticism. When you're the man in the arena and you get bloody and sweat, uh, I'd rather talk about what I, what I have accomplished in eight years. And so, Jack, I'm going to give you a layup. This is to Jack Reardon. Uh, when I inherited the county, it was on the brink of dissolution. And it's a pretty simple question. Is the county better off now, eight years later, than when it was when you left it? I would say absolutely not. When I was a county commissioner, every single budget was balanced. And if you want to look at how it's not better, when you look at the November 2019 Inspector General's report, go Google it, you will see what a financial disaster and mishandling that the county has done with taxpayer funds. So no, it's not. It's not, but it can be improved substantially. And I hope to do that this September. Thank you. All right, very good. And finally, Carlos De Silva. Carlos, you gonna ask a question? Who would you like to ask, ask the question of and ask that question? I actually, I thought I did ask the question already. Uh, you know, I, I see. Did you get any chance to ask, did I not? No, no, I did not. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Then, okay, I'm sorry. If I, if I missed you, then. No, no, I got one. I'm just curious if we're getting two questions. At this no, point. I no. didn't. That was it. No, I, Mr. Uh, Reardon asked me a question, and I was just saying that I had already asked a question, answering his question. But I do have an opportunity now to ask he my gets question. To a, he gets to ask a question of somebody. That's I what understood. it is. So my question goes to the individuals claiming that uh, they have a, a super dredging program. And uh, Mr. Henley, perhaps you can answer that. I mean, obviously, uh, it doesn't look good when the Inspector General issue a reprimand uh, to the commissioners for misusing, supposedly, taxpayers' money, right? It is true that uh, the machine, the excavator, uh, stayed in a warehouse in Kingston for four years, and he only utilized that system, that excavator, twice no, even for the towns in, within Plymouth County, they used to for another two towns. How can you claim that that has been a successful program? And based on my understanding, your idea of a dredging and a, a process, you would work with Armcorp, but that did not happen. Why? Why not? Was there like a lack of a lack of oversight? Do you still claim that that was successful? hear each other here? You want me to wait? Yo. There's a bunch, there are a bunch of vehicles that are, if you will, could you answer yep. the question? This, this is an easy question. So basically, as a county commission, we all have our projects that we all work on. Um, this particular project was brought to us by a group of reps who represented coastal communities. And they had put together a program but couldn't find an agency to fund, uh, to take over the program. So we, as a cooperative form of government, said that we would take on the dredge program. However, the only 
source of revenue or monies that we received was 250000 which just allowed us to purchase the dredge. There was no equipment to uh, carry it with. There was no manpower to work it. And we ended up with it. Now, it's funny how you bring up the uh, report from uh, the Inspector General because if uh, we had answered it, and he posted his uh, reprimand of us on the website, but he did not post our legal response, and it would explain everything. But, and I'm willing to share it with anyone here who thinks that the dredge is something that uh, is a failure. Uh, it was something that was done incrementally. The biggest problem we had when we accepted it, trying to be good guys and provide services, there was no way to sustain it, number one. It wasn't well thought out from their point of view. And then there was promises of subsequent fundings, which never made it through the budget. The, uh, the, structurally, the problem uh, with the cities and towns was that in order to do any kind of work, you need the permission of the Army Corps of Engineers. And if you've ever been involved with that, you know that when you're in Hingham, Carlos, how long it took to get permission. There were not no shovel-ready projects. So we didn't have the resources. We didn't have an area to even store it. We called upon our friends in Kingston to send it over there so it didn't weather away and get damaged. That would have been negligence. That would have been a reason to cry. Here we are, the stewards of a $250,000 piece of equipment that we let rust away. This all came about recently in the town of Kingston when all of the acrimony was going on with the selectmen and the administrator that here is this county dredge that is okay. being housed here. Why is it being housed here? What do we have to do with it? And so we probably haven't done a good job and we know the Thank inspector you. general did not post our legal response and I will share it with you. It'll dispel the myth like immediately for everyone involved. I mean, really. Yeah. I know, I know. Thank you, thank you. I know. Uh, but again, I gave you about 12, 12 to 15 seconds extra over well, with him saying no, stop. I, so. You can take it off my closing statement. Okay, All right? <laughs> we'll do that. And oddly enough, it is time for us to go to closing statements. What we will do is we will reverse the order from how we started. So that means, Mr. Reardon, you have three minutes for your closing statement. Thank you very much, Kevin. When you go to the to vote on September 1st, I'm asking you, don't vote for me only because I grew up in Brockton. I graduated from Brockton High School. Don't vote for me only because I was president of the Brockton Boys and Girls Club. Don't vote for me only because when I was president, we got the old armory and converted it to the Brockton Boys and Girls Club. Don't vote for me because I'm very familiar with the court system and I served as an assistant district attorney here in the county. Don't vote for me only because I was a lieutenant commander in the United States Navy Reserve. Don't vote for me because only because I received the Massachusetts Bar Association Community Service Award. But vote for me because all these together equal character. And there once was a famous statesman, Sir Edmund Burke, that said you vote for somebody because you believe in their character. So on September 1st, I would ask you to cast a vote for me. Visit me at jackreardon.com. Thank you. All right. Closing statement was by uh, Jack Reardon. Next is, I believe, Carlos De Silva. You have three minutes for your closing statement. Good afternoon, voters. Once again, I'm here to humble ask for your vote on or before September 1st. I was elected in 2016 and re-elected in 2019. Voters in Hingham are pleased with my performance. I brought to the State House to meet with legislatures and the State Treasurer who happens to be the chairperson of the Massachusetts School Building Authority, my fellow school committee members, and together we had advocated for, uh, to build a new elementary school. We, as a result, were invited to the uh, M you know, uh, SOI to apply for the eligibility uh, opportunity, and we are applying to build a new school. I uh, have a lot of ties to Brockton. My office happens to be the building right next door to here, 34 Main Street. I, uh, may, I am a member of the NAACP. I am involved with the nonprofit organizations here helping the Latino and uh, the Cape Verdean community. Uh, so I would like to leave you with this before. Um, that I am not, like Mayor Menino used to say, I'm not a fancy talker, but I get the job done. Uh, I am living the American dream, and I'm proud of my private and public record. I would be honored to serve as you as the next commissioner, and I respectfully ask for your vote Go to my website, www.carlosdasilva.org. 
Uh, my number is 781-908-0599. Get involved with my campaign, request a sign. Uh, once again, uh, the Brockton uh, Democratic City Committee and also Kevin, thank you very much, uh, along with Patrick. Uh, you did a superb job. Thank you. Excellent. That was Carlos De Silva with his closing statement. Next is Mr. Mike Bradley. You have three minutes for your closing statement, sir. Thank you. And I, again, I want to thank our hosts and my colleagues here today. And I just want to say that uh, in my time as a Marshfield selectman, in my time as chairman of the advisory board for Plymouth County, I have a history for hard work and fiscal responsibility, supporting our public safety, supporting our schools, veterans, health care, ve uh, union issues. I want to bring the experience I have uh, to Plymouth County. I believe I will hit the ground running on day one because of an excellent relationship with the county commissioners. I'm heavily involved in the budget process right now, and I, I know almost everything there is going on right now in terms of uh, the fiscal budget, the fiscal responsibility, and accountability. One of the things I'd like to say is that some of the programs we we talked about today, veteran services, joint uh, police and fire training, these are things that can come to fruition if we work together. We will always do better if we pool resources, work with our other communities to find ways that we can collaborate on programs to enhance what the county can do for all of our member communities. I really again want to thank everybody here today and I want to thank the commissioners for their hard work. Uh, I do want to state that, that again this is a pick two race. I hope to have your, your vote on September 1st. I'm supporting Greg Hanley. He's a friend and a colleague. I'm honored to have Greg's support. I'm also honored to have the support and endorsement of Mayor Rob Sullivan. I hope to have your support on September 1st. Thank hey, you. That was Mr. Mike Bradley with his closing statement. Uh, our final closing statement will come from Mr. Greg Hanley. You have three minutes, Mr. Hanley. Thank you, Kevin, and thank you to uh, Brockton Access uh, Cable, uh, Community Access, and thank you to the Brockton City Committee. Um, eight years ago, I inherited a mess, $64 million in debt. I ask you to do your diligence. Don't believe us here up on the stage. We're posturing, we're talking, and we're, you know, it, it, you just got to Google things. The beautiful thing about the internet, if you look up the history of the county, you know the shape it was in. I'm proud to be your county commissioner. I'm proud to have worked on debt reduction. I'm proud to take care of our retirees' um, retirement and their uh, insurances. Uh, I am uh, endorsed by Congressman Lynch. I'm endorsed by uh, Mayor Sullivan and former Mayor Linda Belzotti and former Mayor Jim Harrington. And if, if my pal, Mr. Carpenter, was here today, I'm sure he'd endorse me because at his death we were actually working on modernizing uh, the district attorney's building for inspectional services. So with that, folks, I want to thank uh, these guys for putting their name on the line. It's not easy to run for public office, uh, especially when you have no money to spend. But it's been my passion. Uh, it's been my uh, credo that there's no problem, just solutions. It's all how you look at it. When you empower people to solve their problems, when you encourage collegiality, when you encourage a spirit of cooperation, there's nothing you can't do. The crowning achievement of Plymouth County thus far in my tenure is the acceptance of the Plymouth County CARES Act program, $90 million that the federal government deemed available to Plymouth County. There were four counties that applied for it. Two of them got it and quickly understood they were overwhelmed and returned the money to the state. That left us in Suffolk. We have the education, we have the, the people to process it because we have a history of it through knowing our people every single day. We know who our administrators are. We know who our treasurers are on a first name basis. I challenge you all to ask any community who's received a CARES uh, Act fu funding from the county to get their unsolicited uh, opinion of how the county has functioned. You know, words have been said tonight that, you know, weren't too bad, not too regrettable, but sooner or later, I'm going to have to serve with one of these guys. And I, I appreciate the fact that, um, you know, we've kept it on a level that's semi-professional. Having said that, uh, September 1st is our vote. I ask for one of you two votes, especially here in the city of Brockton. I've done a, a lot of things that uh, we've spoken about, and I look forward to continuing them as we move forward. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Good afternoon, and God bless. That was Mr. Uh, Greg Hanley with the closing statement. Today's forum did feature the Democrat candidates who are running for Plymouth County Commissioner. Uh, thank you to the candidates for participating and helping to better 
um, educate the residents before they go vote during the primary election on September 1st. Again, this was brought to you by the Brockton Democratic City Committee and Brockton Community Access as we are outside of the new, improved, and quite noisy uh, Brockton Community Access. Um, I want to thank the production crew, Phil, Deb, Patrick, and, um, and those who are watching. I'm Kevin Tachi. Have a good day.